We are in the second week, the second week of this series called Light Chasers, Learning to See, Learning to See in the Dark. Now, um, if you came to my place yesterday, of course, Pastor Michelle and I, and uh, she hosted the uh, women's group yesterday, and, you know, if you came, you noticed that that we were under construction. I'm fairly embarrassed, because there's always construction going on in our house, right? This is like a 200-year-old house, and some stuff is like, we, some stuff we just call character now, right? This is not going to change. It's just that's the way it is. Um, it would take massive amounts of money to change some of the things in, in, the, in this old house, but um, forever, <laughs> forever under construction. If you notice you, that we did uh, build a dog door, or we have two dogs, we have a little toy Yorkie, um, who I love to death, 17 years old. <laughs> I, I do love her, actually, but she's challenging in the same way. She's 17 years old, so she has kind of a mind of her own. Um, and then uh, that was all for a dog. And then, of course, we have a younger dog named, named Willow. She's a sweetheart, which everybody loves. Uh, you know, giant big dog, but it's tall. And so I had to build this door that's big enough for, for the both of them, um, which is challenging because you've got this tiny little dog, and then you've got this giant dog, and it just, you know, she only needs this little hole, and he, she needs the other one needs the big one. So um, I built this this past week, and I built some stairs going out, and we were good until it came time to actually use it. And they were a little apprehensive about the stairs. And then I realized that there was no light outside where they were going to go. And Willow particularly, right, the bigger dog, she was not having it. Like, she's like, nope, it's dark outside. I am not, I don't know what's out there. I am not, she would put her head out the window, or out the little door, and she'd go, yeah, I, I, no, I'm not doing it. And so we were worried, like, she's not going to go because... Because it's dark, and so I ended up having to go out and, and buy a little light and put it on the side, and it just kind of comes on, motion sensor, and you know, then the light came on. It took her a little bit, but she realized and recognized that, that what was out there is in the dark is the same thing that's out there, there in the light. So eventually, you know, she used that. And now I'm happy to, you know, announce uh, to you, in case you were wondering, that she's using the, the doggy door. Um, just as often as she needs to. So here's the thing, and I, I say that to illustrate this: fear is often born out of perception, of out of what we think or what we perceive as harmful. Right? There's nothing harmful out there that I know of. There was nothing harmful, nothing different than what was in the light. But but even when there's nothing to be afraid of, we have this perception. Uh, you know, when we're looking into something we don't understand, or we're looking into something that we would say, you know, literally in the dark, we are a little bit afraid of it. Um, Psalm 1828, I just want to give you this scripture today, because I think some of you might need it. It says, for you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Just a little scripture for you to declare against your fears as we start our new week. So I want to pray this morning, because I don't often do this because we pray a lot into our service. But I want to pray uh, today as we get, because we're going to be bathed in scripture today. And I want the Spirit of God to fall fresh on you today. So if you would just pray with me. God, we come to you today and we thank you. We thank you for the day that we have today. We thank you for the people that have come to serve you here today. We thank you for the people that have come to honor you here today, God. We pray that you would anoint the word that we are speaking today, God. We pray that you would anoint the ears that are hearing that word, God. We pray that you would anoint the hearts by the Spirit of God, that these words would permeate our very soul, the very fabric of our being, God, that they may, that they may seep into who we are, our spirit, God, and that we stand in agreement with everything that is said today, the truth of God, by the Spirit of God, God, for righteousness and for you, God. We love you, we honor you, and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so... So far in this series, we have talked about identifying darkness so that we can expose it to the light. And when we expose dark moments in our lives uh, to the light of Jesus, darkness cannot overcome it, right? That's scriptural. That's in the Bible. Darkness flees. We also learn that harboring unforgiveness keeps us in the dark spiritually. And in order to be free, we have to let go. We have to let God do his work. We have to let God do his work in our relationships uh, with each other and let God do his work in a relationship, our relationship, obviously, with Jesus. So listen, if you understand these two things, being able to recognize something as, as evil or dark or unhelpful in your life, and you realize that forgiveness is the only way out of that darkness, whether it be forgiving others or whether it be asking for Jesus to forgive 
you restoring your relationship with God, you have the knowledge that you need to step in to the light and the love of God and receive the gift of light that is given to us by God through, through Jesus. And if you have believed in Jesus and received him as Lord, you've recognized your need for Jesus, for a Savior, and realized your desire to walk out of the darkness and into the light, and now you realize that you are a child, the Bible says, a child of the light. Pretty cool, right? In fact, 1 Thessalonians 5.5 5 says this, You are children of the light, children of the day. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. So whatever the former was, it's gone, and now you are a child of the light, and you do not belong. You do not belong in darkness. Believe it, declare it, claim it, and walk in the goodness of God's word, right? Already some scripture. I really hope this is really permeating. Believe it, believe it, believe it, declare it. God's word over your life. Children of the light. Children of the light. So listen, that's it. I mean, sermon's over. <laughs> We're done, right? I mean, that's gospel mission accomplished, right? We've, we've preached the gospel message. You have believed in Jesus. You have put your faith in Jesus Christ. And by grace through faith, you are now saved, and we're good. Now we can all just sit around, and we can meditate, and, you know, we can wait on the Lord, right? Wait on the Lord. He's coming back, right? This is a good thing. I don't want to make, I don't want to make light of it. I make fun of it. He's coming back. But, but, you know, you can just sit around. It's done. It's done. We're going to close it up, and, you know, we probably don't even have to come here next Sunday. And we're all done, right? Once you're saved, you're saved. It's good. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need to be careful what I say, right? Nobody will come here next week. Like, you said we were done. Um, so look, if you're like me, if you're like, like me, because I went through this myself, you may be asking yourself this question. Maybe you're a new, new believer, and you're thinking, you know, I'm still here. I'm still breathing. There's still life in me. Surely God wants more from me here on this earth. There's something that he wants me to do, or there are blessings that he has for me. There's something more for me beyond, beyond the important thing. Of, of, of course, becoming a child of God through your belief in Jesus. You see, you go from one day living in the dark to the next day walking in the light. You become a believer in Jesus, and the natural question is not what now, but really it's what's next. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, that's the question, what's next? And if you haven't asked yourself that question, that's what it's got to be. What is next? Today, I want to talk to you about living in the light that you now have. I want to talk to you about how to grow in your relationship with Jesus by the power and the presence of the light of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I've titled today's message, Growing in the Light. He's just getting started. You see, God has plans for each and every one of us. God has Jeremiah 29, 11 plans for each and every one of us, right? Some of you know what I'm talking about. He's got plans for us. He's got plans for us to prosper. He has plans for a hope. He has plans for a future for that hope. But we have to step into our tomorrow or we won't ever experience those things. We have to step into it, step forward by faith into his plan and his purpose for our lives. And in doing so, we need a little bit of help. So moving forward... As believers, as followers of Jesus, we need, we need a little bit of help. We need a little bit of training. Anytime you start something new, think about this. The most important thing, you know, some of you might be, be managers, leaders of different organizations, companies, whatever. Some of you have probably, I'm sure all of you have been looking around, have worked a job at some point. You know, so you started something. But anytime you start something new, the most important thing, and really what might be the indicator of success in your life, is training, right? It's training. I mean, let's face it. Not everybody likes to do it. Sometimes it's kind of cumbersome when we go over things that seem so basic and fundamental. But, but you know what? It's important. It's important. I remember my first job. Just to tell you this quick story. I started working when I was 13 years old. And um, I didn't have to. I had a blessed childhood. My, I mean, my dad provided for me. My parents were, were you know, a crazy, you know, uh, provision. But, but I just had this. I, I was a golfer, right? That's weird to some of you, I know. But that's what I did. You know, so, I mean, some people play football, some people play soccer, and I did all those things when I was younger, but I chose, you know, golf into my, my later years and teens. And so I wanted to be able to play golf for free. And I heard that there was a public golf course where I lived in Seattle that if you got on working as uh, just a, you know, a guy that picks it up on the driving range, this is the place where they go and they, they hit golf balls out to the, to the nothingness there. 
And when you got a job there, you got to play golf for free and use the driving range for free. And I was like, that's for me. That's what I want to do. So I went and I would spend a lot of time. I would have my parents would drop me off in the morning and I wouldn't leave until, you know, later that night. I would spend my whole day there. And so I kept bugging this one golf professional, right, that ran the course. His name was Casey. Casey Anderson was his name. And, and I bugged this guy. Every day I would ask him for a job. Hey, do you have a job today? Next day, hey, do you have a job today? Next day, hey, do you have a job today? I mean, and in my ignorance, you know, I eventually annoyed this man enough to where he said, you know what, fine, you're here every day anyways. We might as well put you to work. And so he did. He put me to work, and the first thing he did, now mind you, I'm 13 years old, I'm certainly not a driving age, but he gives me the keys to this three-speed, right, Cushman tractor. And this was used to go out onto the driving range and pick up the golf balls that people were going out and hitting. And so he gives me, he goes, you know how to use this, don't you? And I, would, and I was so excited about this job, I didn't want to tell him I didn't know. And I said, yeah, I, can, I think so. And so I took the keys, and I... And I'm grinding through the gears, going down to the, driving by, you know, the putting green, and all the people are like, what's going on? So I get out there, and I cannot drive this thing, right? I get it hooked up in the middle of the driving range. There's golf balls flying all over, and the thing stalls out, and I can't get it going. So I'm sitting here in this Cushman tractor. Now, mind you, it's all caged so the golf balls don't break the windows and glass. And, and, and I can't, I'm just stuck because I didn't receive any training, right? I didn't receive any training. The funny thing was, all my buddies were up there hitting balls, right? They were at the thing, and the, and the fun thing is trying to smack the cart with the ball. So they were all smacking, you know, line drives into the side of the thing. It's this loud thing, and I can't go anywhere. But eventually, I see, you know, Casey come down, and he stops everybody from hitting on the driver and drives on the golf cart, gets in, you know, just the gears, and gets me out of there. And I thought, oh, man, I'm done. This is it. I'm done. I'm fired first day. And he said, no, 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 it's okay. He didn't know. He said, I didn't train you how to do this. And then he trained me, and I worked there for several years. For several years successfully, and only stalled the cart a couple more times. But listen, success starts with a good foundation. It starts with good training. And moving forward, listen, the trainer that you have in your walk with God, it makes all the difference. The gospel is the foundation. It's the foundation. Obviously, it's essential for appropriate spiritual growth. Paul emphasizes this when he's talking to the church in Corinth, right? The church in Corinth had, had some issues, as did most of the seven churches. But Paul, here, he's writing this letter to the Corinthians, and he's admonishing them, trying to help them, and trying to keep them on track. And he says this in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 5. He says, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I have preached to you, by which you received, and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I have received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and he appeared to Cephas, that's Peter, and the twelve. Right? So that's the foundation. That's the foundation. It's the main thing. But now you need you need. A trainer. You need somebody to help you go to the next, to the what's next. Who's that? Who's that's going to be? If we only knew somebody, right, that knew everything there was to know about God, that can lead us in righteousness, that can help us on our journey as Christians here on this earth. If, no, ew, gosh, if we just knew somebody that, that, that could help, we do. <laughs> we do, right? We do. And we've touched on it here just a little bit if you're paying attention. We touched on it. It is uh, he is the holy, the holy spirit. He is an equal representation of God's love, and is a relationship that is sparked when you become a believer in Jesus. And I'm talking about the light, the illumination that is found in your walk with God through the Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, here's the thing. This is God really puts this on my heart. He's going to preach about something else today, and, and I thought, you know what? I got to preach on this. Because it's something that it just it's under it's under preached in our churches. It's a pulpit problem, right? It's not a you problem. And the problem is is that that it's it's a difficult thing sometimes. It, the Holy Spirit, if you go through, if you're an exegetical preacher, right, to find a passage that kind of outlines every aspect of the Holy Spirit, just one, is very difficult. You know, it, it's kind of it's kind of in different places in different ways. And the Holy Spirit is there from the very beginning to the very end, mind you. 
Right? So it's a big, big, big topic, and sometimes it's difficult for, for people to understand. But he he is a huge part of the life we've been talking about for the past for the past three weeks. So he's under misunderstood in some church cir church circles. It's quite tragic because he is incredibly, incredibly important. So listen, you have the foundation. You have the foundation. I want to introduce you to your trainer. I want to introduce you to your trainer, as he your helper, as you walk in the light of Jesus. You ready? All right. If you ready, say amen. 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 Okay. So we're going to look at the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Everything you need to know and more, right? Everything everything you <laughs> everything you wanted but didn't get for Christmas. It's on sale now. It's here. Do you remember that? <laughs> Sorry, All right, so Holy Spirit given by God through our belief in Jesus to help, listen, our spirit connect with God, our creator. Here's a few, tr a few truths about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not just a power, right? It's not just this apparition, not just a power. It is also, it, he is also a person. The Holy Spirit is a person, Scripture tells us. The Holy Spirit is co-equal, co-equal with the Father and with the Son. The Holy Spirit is the author of Scripture, 2 Timothy 3.16, right? All Scripture is God-breathed. This is the inspiration, the pneuma, right? It's breathed out. This is the inspiration of Scripture. It's God-breathed. The Holy Spirit confronts. The Holy Spirit comforts. The Holy Spirit guides us in all truth and all righteousness. That is our trainer, right? As a believer in Jesus, as a follower of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is what God has given us as a trainer. So you have a spirit in you. Realize that. You created your mind, body, and spirit. That's not some weird Eastern thing. That's in the Bible. God created you. Everything in you, all your organs. He created your mind. He created your heart. He created all your limbs. And in you, he put his spirit. Into you. you have a spirit inside of you. And then you also have, listen, if you are a believer, you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 16 says this. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of Children of God. So revival of our own spirit is dependent on a clear biblical understanding of who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit does. Jesus gives us a good foundation for this. Probably one of the longest passages uh, or descriptions by Jesus himself of the Holy Spirit. And really kind of throw some other really good stuff in there too. John 14, if you have your Bibles, if you want to scroll there. Uh, on your YouVersion Bible app to John 14. We're going to look at verse, verse 15, maybe a little background here, you know, because I'm a Bible teacher and I just have to do this. So John's gospel. If you, anybody asks you where should I start reading the Bible, I always tell them go to John's gospel, right? If you start in the beginning of Genesis, it's fine. You can get, get through that. But if you want to really understand, if you really want to understand God's word, start in John's gospel, right? Because when you read God's word in the light of the Holy Spirit, right, right you really can't read it. Can't understand it outside of the light of the Spirit. So John's Gospel will help you get the Spirit in you. Okay? Listen, four sections. Four sections commonly, commonly known for John's Gospel is this. Jesus' interaction with people. So Jesus interacts with people. He goes to a wedding. He changes water uh, into wine. He interacts with a woman at the well. Um, he interacts with Nicodemus. Remember, this is a conversation about how can I be born again? How can I be born twice? And he interacts, of course, many times with the crowd. First section of John's Gospel. Second is Jesus' sayings. The sayings of Jesus, mostly in the face of the religious leaders. But we get the seven I am statements out of John's Gospel. Seven I am, Jesus says I am, and then follows up with something that okay, he is, right? All really good, good stuff instruction. And then personal instruction. Personal instruction to his disciples, which is where we find what we're going to read, and then it kind of closes out like the other Gospels do with Jesus' passion. Right? That's the week before his death, and his death, of course, the betrayal of Jesus, the, the death, the burial, the resurrection. So commonly, commonly known in four, or you can look at that really in four larger sections. So this, uh, John 14, kind of found in the third movement, right? The third movement of personal instruction to his disciples. And this biblical explanation of the promise of the Holy Spirit, it comes at a time when they're eating. Jesus always loved to talk when he was, he was eating. Yeah? I wonder why he wants us to, to share, share in communion from time to time, right? It's just a time where you can just sit down with everybody. And you, it's just, it opens the door for, for conversation. It's a good thing. That's why you should break bread with people. It's a good, good thing to do. Um, so he's eating with his disciples. This would be the last opportunity. 
right? That he would have really to talk to them before he would go to their death and give them the knowledge that they needed. He spoke about his betrayal. Um, he spoke about his departure. He talked about heaven. He talked about peace. He talked about the world. Uh, he talked about fruitfulness. And of course, he, he spoke to them on his, his return. The first occasion when he brings up the Holy Spirit is found in John 14, starting in verse 15. And I'm just going to read verses 15 through 27, just to give you the full, the full measure of what Jesus said. So in John 14, starting in verse 15, says this. If you love me, Jesus talking, if you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit, right? So the Greek the advocate, we call it the par paraclete, right? The Holy Spirit, he will never leave you, who leads you into all truth. The world cannot receive him because he isn't looking, they, because it isn't looking for him. And doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you. And later he will be in you. So you realize the Holy Spirit has been around since the very beginning. Right? The Spirit of God. I mean, we see a song about it. The Spirit's been there since the very beginning, since the creation. And he was the pillar of uh, uh, the cloud in the desert. He was the pillar of fire at night when they were coming out of Eden. This is the same Spirit of God. Right? And he's the same Spirit that's, that's with the disciples. But here in Pentecost... Then he will become, he will become, he will indwell in them. And so these disciples then will have the Holy Spirit in them. And that same Spirit then continues to indwell in those that believe from that point on, right? Okay, just so you make sure and understand where that comes from. All right, so he says, He is the Holy Spirit who leads you in all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No I, will, no, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me since I, since I live. You also will live. He's talking about you know, eternal salvation. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them. And reveal myself to each of them. Now, this is interesting because if you've never seen this, if you ever tried to understand the triune nature of God, the fact that God is three persons in one. He is God the Father, He is God the Son, and He is God the Holy Spirit. Jesus Himself explains that right here in this passage. We just read about it. So it says in verse 22, it says, Judas, not Judas Iscariot, just to be sure. But the other disciple with that name said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us and not to the world at large? Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My father will love them and I will come and I make my home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember my words are not my own. What I'm telling you is from the father who sent me. I am telling you these things now while I'm still with you. But when the Father sends the Advocate, my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything that I have told you. What does that sound like? That sounds like a trainer to me. That sounds like a trainer. Verse 27, I am leaving you with the gift of gift, peace of mind and heart, and peace I, I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled and don't be afraid. This same gift that he's talking about, that the, that the disciples, I mean, this is, this is going to happen. We already know it, right? They don't know it here, but we know it and we see it and it happens. It's the same gift that God has given us through our belief in Jesus and the things that he said. We all have the potential, the potential to capture and hold the light of God that's given us because we have the ingredients for that if we're believers we have the ingredients for that in our lives right now if not the holy spirit is not absent he's still there and if you're not a believer it's okay because the holy spirit eventually he will communicate with you because the holy spirit will convict you of the things that you need to realize in order to become a believer in jesus right so the holy spirit plays a part in your life if you're not a believer and he plays the spirit, he plays a role in your life if you are a believer Holy Spirit is for everyone, right? Has no favorites. Here's your first, first point. First point. Listen, in order to walk in that light effect, we have to recognize these three things. And this is the first point. The Holy Spirit testifies that we are signed by God in Jesus' name. Signed 
and by God in Jesus' name. Hebrews 10, 15 through 16 says this. This is a message verse. It says this. This new plan I am making with the people. He's talking about the new covenant, right? The old covenant. This is the law with Moses. The new covenant. This is made through, uh, uh, by the blood of Jesus. It says this new plan I'm making with the people. Is it going to be written on paper? It's not going to be written or chiseled into stone. It, this time I'm writing out the plan in them. Carving it on the lining of their hearts. You know you had a tattoo if you're a believer? <laughs> No, we don't do tattoos. That's, that's taboo. No, listen, you do. You have a tattoo. Even if you don't like tattoos, you have them. It's on your heart. It's Jesus' name. It's chiseled in your heart. Amen? You have it. It's literally tattooed. The name of Jesus on the heart of every, every believer. You know what that means? That you are an original signed work. That's valuable. An original sign were created by God, signed in Jesus' name, with the potential to be filled with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Here's your second point. The Holy Spirit seals us with the blessing of salvation. Ephesians 1.13 says this. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, out of the darkness, into the light, and now walking in the light with the help, listen, the help of Jesus who promised, who promised that those who believe would receive this spirit, this advocate, this helper, right? Quick third and final point is this. The Holy Spirit delivers us, listen, delivers us from the strongholds of darkness. We're talking about chasing the light, right? We're talking about chasing the light out of darkness. The Holy Spirit delivered us, delivers us from that darkness. This is probably the single biggest hindrance to spiritual growth that I've seen in my lifetime. The biggest hindrance to spiritual growth and walking in the light, but it's actually, as a believer, listen, you have this power, it's actually the most obvious thing to recognize. You just have to be sensitive to the Spirit's leading in it. You have to be sensitive to the, if you're a believer, you've experienced this. I know you have. You see something that you saw as an unbeliever, and then you saw it through the eyes of the Spirit, something in the world, and you go, wow, I can't believe, I can't believe I didn't see that before. That's kind of messed up. That's a little dark, right? I mean, you look at things a little differently. That's what happens. That's the eyes that's the eyes of God. That's, that's the Holy Spirit. See, but there's some strongholds in this world. Strongholds in this world. Strongholds are the enemy's tactic for keeping us in the dark. It's the enemy. And there's three strategies, really, that the devil uses. Three. The first one is this. I'm just going to share this. Lies. He attempts to distract you, distract you with lies. You ever read the story about Jesus in the desert? Jesus spent some time out in the desert after he gets baptized and he goes to college for like four years. You know, God's college. And then he, he goes and the devil tempts him. Immediately after that, the devil tempts him. And he promises him these three things. And, and, and of course, he fights it. And, and he does. But the devil whispers. He's, the picture is the devil whispering into our Savior's ear. Just trying to, just feeding him just flat out lies. Of course, Jesus is, this is God, you know. Jesus is, is not going to fall going to fall for this. And he combats, he combats the devil with what? With the spirit of truth, which is what? God's word. He combats it with, with scripture, but the enemy will do that. Same for you. He will try and distract you. He will whisper in your ear and distract you with lies. You're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You don't have the faith. And he'll do that. And let me tell you, I'm here to tell you today that you do. That you do with the power of the spirit of the truth of God's word. He will discourage you with fear. He will plant fear in in your life, right? Little Willow, look at her. This is a big dog. I'm like, she can take on any dumb animal that comes in that, you know, a raccoon. No problem, you know. This is a big dog sticking her head out there, afraid of the dark. Come on, what's she afraid of? That's what the enemy does, right? As humans, we're the same, right? We kind of go, Ooh, I don't know, we're afraid of what we can't can't see. Little bit, little bit of fear. Listen, let the spirit strengthen your faith. This is what the trainer will do. The Holy Spirit will strengthen your faith. Faith over fear. 
And when you allow the Spirit to come in to your life, and you allow the Spirit to permeate the fiber of your being, listen, it can help you overcome some of those fears. When you're lying in your bed and you're thinking, I don't know if I can get up today, you can pray to God that the Spirit will help you do this. That the Spirit will take this leg and put it on the floor. And the Spirit will take this leg and put it on the floor. And the Spirit will rise up your creaking back and you'll stay there and you'll be going okay at least i got this far and if i've gotten this far i can take the next step right through faith by the power of god through through the holy spirit faith faith listen we're free i know it's tough i know it's tough but listen it's a promise of god that he will help you do it he will help you he will help you do it so that's the enemy's tactic he will discourage you with fear the other thing is he will demoralize you with division this is a huge one Right? Look at our country. Look at our world. What is the single biggest problem we have and have ever had since the history of the beginning of time? Division. Division. And it is a tactic of the devil. It is a tactic of Satan. It is his favorite thing to do because he knows a house divided cannot stand. He knows that. That's why he infiltrates even our churches to keep everybody riled. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Declare, declare God's word against it. Listen, the spirit of unity comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit allows us to live in unity with one another. And we share that because we share the same spirit. The same spirit together that trains us. And he will train us all the same way. Right? He will train us all the same way. Listen, in, in, in God's truth and his word. Always sure by doing what Jesus did. Always start by doing what Jesus did and declare the Holy Spirit inspired word of God over the lies that Satan's whispering under your ear, over the fear that you feel, and over the division that you might find in your life. This is how Jesus did it. This is how Jesus fought the devil when he was tempted in the wilderness. It's how he did it. And the Bible says that the Spirit was with him, leading him the whole time. This is an illustration for how we should walk. It is. Good training. You should walk the same way. If you want to be like Jesus is, we have to do what Jesus did. Walk by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. Spirit, because that same Spirit's available to you. The same Spirit that was there on the on that, that mountainside, the same Spirit that was there when Jesus was being tempted from the devil, that's the same Spirit that lives inside you. That's incredible. That's incredible that that Spirit, that same Spirit, the power and the presence of that Spirit is inside of you as a believer. Do you realize the power and potential that we have to affect this world? My gosh, talk about hiding your, your light under a basket. No, we are a city on a hill. we got to shine. we got to shine the glory of God and the Spirit and the Spirit that is in. Because listen, it will lead us. He will lead us through the face of our trust. He will break the strongholds of darkness in our life. He is divine. He's the divine supernatural light of the world. He is the supernatural light of your world if you'll, if you'll allow him. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4 says this, for we walk in the flesh. For, for, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Right? To take the enemy out. When the team comes up, I'm I'm going to close here, but we live in a world, listen, that is rapidly changing. Rapidly changing. And it has been. This is not a new thing. Much of what we see is not new. Well, you know, Solomon says there's nothing new under the sun in Ecclesiastes. Much of what we've seen has really happened before, in one way, shape, fashion, or form. But the world's changing. And there is a lot of dark stuff out there. There's really a lot of dark stuff out in the world. You know this, I don't have to tell you. If you watch the news or have social media, which almost everybody does, um, you know this. Isn't it good to know that even in the midst of all that, that we serve a God, right? In an ever-changing world, we serve a God that will never change. He will never change. And because of his life-giving gift of Jesus, we don't have to be like the rest of the world. We don't have to walk in this darkness. We can recognize it, and we can move on from it. We can recognize it, and we can speak the name of Jesus over it. We can recognize it, and we can help people come out of it. But as believers, we do not have to walk in it. So going forward as a follower of Jesus, know that the power and the presence of God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is in you. And it's there to help keep that light, that light of faith, going each and every day. Amen. Amen. Would you pray?
pray with me? God, we just come to you today and we thank you, God. We thank you for the measure of your word that you have given us today. God, we pray that, that the words that, that come from the inspired words of the Holy Spirit that are written down in what we now, what we now look at as the Bible, God, the Holy Scriptures, God, that these would, 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 would just, that they would seep into our heart, God. That when we're faced with times of trouble, when we're faced with these, these strongholds, when the enemy's whispering lies, when, when there's darkness in our life, when we're, we're dealing with a little bit of fear, God, that by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, you might bring us scripture, God, that we might not even know we know. Because we know that's how you work. We know that's how the Holy Spirit works. Bring us to remembrance the truths that are found in God's word and speaks those out of you. God, may we speak those over our own lives. God, may you give us the confidence and may you give us the, the, the words to speak over others' lives so this same incredible grace and glory may be realized throughout this world, God. God, we thank you for everything that you do. We want to make sure, God, if there's anybody here that has never accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, if you've not created that foundation yet, I don't want to leave today without giving you that opportunity. And it's really very simple. It's really very simple because God has given us his son, his one and only son. And he died on Calvary's cross and shed his blood as a sacrifice for the sins of the entire world, for you and for me. All those dark things that maybe the Holy Spirit is kind of bringing to light. The answer for all of that is Jesus. Is Jesus. You just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I'm chasing, I'm chasing the light out of the darkness. And I want to absorb the light that you are, that you bring. Because he is the light of the world. You will come in to your heart and you will be the light of your world. If that's you and you've made a decision today to do that, when you become a follower of Jesus, you become a child of God and welcome to the family. God, we love you. God, we praise you. God, we honor you. In Jesus' name.